When talking about size, we usually tend to think of the size of the company. But the size of the company in itself, it is not a real point. The point is the matching between the size of the company and the size of the market. So it is important to move the attention from the size of the company to the size of the market. We know that every market can be segmented. That is to say, every market can be broken down in different segments, each one of which can have a size. And a segmentation is a creative act of the company. That is to say, the single company can segment the market in many different ways. And so basically can come up with, to come up with segments, each one of them can have a different size. So the point is to find a way that matches basically the size of the company with the size of the market. When talking about the size of the market, and so the match between the size of the market and the size of the company, one very important managerial issue is to try to figure out which is the approach that the company wants to have to the market. And so we can figure out a continuum. On one opposite, one extreme of this continuum, there is niche markets. On the other side, there are mass markets. So basically, these are the two opposite, and in between, there are many different options that a single company can pursue. What is a niche market? A market is a small market, which is basically made of customers whose expectations are very different from the other expectations, the expectations of the other customers of the market. So a company that wants to pursue a niche strategy is a company whose offering, whose value proposition is so different from that of its competitors and so aligned with the expectations of very, this very sophisticated small part of the market that is able to match these expectations. This is a niche market and a niche marketing company. On the opposite, there is a mass market, and so a mass marketing company. That is to say, a company which basically approaches the market with one single value proposition. So the same value proposition for the whole market. We know that the market can be segmented, but the company for its own reasons, financial reasons, competitive reasons, image reasons, strategic reasons, it decides to approach the market with one single value proposition. Obviously, this is an extreme. In today's markets, in food and beverage businesses, it's very unlikely and common to find a company which tends to approach the market exactly the same way, with the same value proposition. But in theory, there is this option. In most of the situations, companies choose a strategy in between. So close to the niche marketing strategy, there is a specialization, segment specialization. That is to say, a company decides to focus on one single segment, which is not so narrow as a niche one, which can be very broad, but the company serves all the needs of the people, in the customers into the segment. So for this reason, it is specialized. One example is companies specialized in baby foods. So baby foods, it depends on the age, it depends on the specific requirements of the mothers or the families. So I can decide to focus on that segment to be specialized in baby food and so to serve all the customers in that segment with all the needs they have. One very nice, nice example is HIP. HIP is one of the most uh, popular brands and so companies in this business, which is completely specialized in organic food for babies. Close to the mass marketing approach, there is the macro segmentation approach. That is to say, the company splits, divides the market into very big segments, few but big segments. So in this case, the value propositions are different, but are different only for big segments. So the company doesn't go into more specific segments. One, one example in this case could be a burger chain like McDonald's. McDonald's has a very standardized approach all over the world, so it can seem very mass marketing. But then a few years ago, McDonald's launched McCafe. With McCafe, the company wanted to target another segment for the occasions of usage, which is basically breakfast or breaks along the day. So they have the traditional McDonald's restaurant and then the McCafe. So in this case, two macro segments divided by the occasion of usage served with two different value propositions. So in between, there are multi-segmentation strategies. That is to say, companies which try to approach the market and each segment of the market with different value propositions. 
So this is very market oriented because the company recognizes that into the market there are different segments with different expectations and so the, the company decides to serve each single segment with a different value proposition. Usually this value proposition is represented internally by a specific brand. So there are companies with very huge brand portfolios, each one is devoted to a specific segment. In the, in the food and beverage businesses, this is the typical approach of big multinationals. If you think Danone in the yogurt segment, in the yogurt market, they have many different brands for each different segment within the market. Or if you think to the spirits, we have big groups like Diageo or Bacardi, and they have different spirits or so different value proposition for each segment within the spirit market. Besides the continuum between niche and mass market, there is another, which is uh, parallel to this, another continuum that we can take into consideration to take decisions, managerial decision, which is the continuum between personalization and standardization. So personalization basically means that I, I give the specific segment a specific value proposition. At an extreme, it means that each single customer can have a specific value proposition. With standardization, we have exactly the opposite. That is to say, one single value proposition for everyone. So usually standardization backs a mass marketing approach, whereas personalization backs the niche marketing approach. And also in this case, you can have many different options in between. That is to say, if you have a multi-segment strategy, it means that you give some value propositions to specific segments which are more personally, let's say, meeting the expectation of that specific segment. Let's take an example, the food service business. The typical example of standardization is a restaurant with a predefined tasting menu. You enter, the, you get into the restaurant, you cannot choose, basically. So there is a tasting menu, you can take only this one. On the opposite side, complete personalization, you get into the restaurant and you ask for the recipe you want to have. Obviously, this is very uncommon in restaurants because if you pursue this strategy, you should be able to have all the ingredients that can combine, give customers all the potential recipes they want to, they like and they prefer. But in this case, there are other options in between. For example, the typical example is a restaurant where you have a tasty menu and a menu a la carte, where basically you can choose a predefined menu or you can choose the combination of recipes that you like most. And we go ahead, we move into the imam consumption. That is to say, since I like my specific recipes, I don't go to the restaurant, but I prepare them on myself. But also in this case, a company can provide you with the help and so with a specific value proposition. Maybe you are not so competent in cooking, maybe you are not so competent in portioning the food that you want to prepare and eat. So in this case, there is a good example, which is HelloFresh, which is a company basically providing you with all the ingredients of a recipe that you can prepare at home with yourself. So the only thing you have to do is to prepare the recipe with the ingredients that have been chosen and portioned by the company. So as you see, there are many different options in terms of personalizations and in terms of standardization. But the point that in each market, for each product, each service, we can imagine a standardization and a personalization. One nice example of personalization is a project by PepsiCo, which is called Spire. Basically, Spire is a digital soda fountain machine. That is to say, a machine where you can get your soda, that is your drink, and you can mix the ingredients to make the, basically the drink you like which is a revolutionary project in a business where usually customers are not able to mix the ingredients, they can only get the brand with the flavors that they like. So also in this business it is possible. The point is you have to choose between personalization and standardization and so between niche marketing approach or mass marketing approach. And obviously there are advantages and disadvantages in both. If you go for a mass market with a standardized value proposition, you by definition are very efficient. So your cost will be reduced, you have a lot of synergies, commercial synergies, production synergies, communication synergies, but on the other side you would standardize, that is to say you are basically asking your customers who have different expectations to reduce their expectation in order to be aligned to your value proposition. 
On the other side, you have personalization, which is very effective. That is to say, the real advantage is effectiveness, because as an extreme, you give each single consumer a specific value proposition, or each different segment a specific value proposition. But by doing so, you have to differentiate your value proposition, so you have to di diversify. And by doing this, you increase the cost, because you cannot use the same combination of production factors, or commercial factors, or communication factors for everyone for every brand, for every product. So in this case, you increase the effectiveness but lose efficiency. So that again, it is a point, a managerial choice of the company to choose which is the strategy to pursue. That is to say, which is the position the company wants to have in this continuum. Closer to the niche, closer to the mass. Closer to the personalization, closer to the standardization. Starbucks is a good example of a mass marketing approach. Obviously, as a consumer, you could say, when I get into a Starbucks uh, restaurant, I can choose the combination of products that I want. And you will be right. But the point is the format. Star Starbucks restaurants are a format of restaurants. And the format is always the same. Maybe you can find different, slightly different formats in, in city centers or in uh, airports or other locations. But the basic format is more or less the same. So it's very close to the mass marketing approach. A nice and interesting example in the personalization of food service is Subway. Subway is a big chain of fast food. You, mean you can eat sandwiches, panini, and other different recipes. But one way to approach the personalization issue is to provide customers with the possibility of making their own sandwich. That is to say, Subway allows consumers to choose different breads, different fillings, different uh, dressings, and so by doing so, each single customer can get exactly the recipe he or she wants.